Istanbul hosted the Heart of Asia 8th Ministerial Conference on Monday. The conference was inaugurated by the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his Afghani counterpart, President Ashraf Ghani. The aim of the conference was to enhance regional cooperation towards Afghanistan, a country which has seen more than 18 years of conflict. Many foreign ministers from different countries were also present during the summit, and I got the opportunity to sit down with the foreign minister of Pakistan to ask him how his country sees the war in Afghanistan and how important is a stable Afghanistan for Pakistan. I'm Jafar Hasnan, and this is a News Exclusive. Foreign Minister Shaman Mutkureshi, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, you are here for the Heart of Asia Istanbul process. Let me start by talking about Afghanistan. The name of Afghanistan has almost become synonymous with America's longest war. 18 years and still no end in sight. Pakistan being a key stakeholder, please tell me how does your government look at the war in Afghanistan right now? Well, I think uh, we are at a very uh, critical stage at the moment because the peace process that was initiated and completely wholeheartedly supported uh, by Pakistan has entered uh, a, a very critical stage. Uh, we hope that uh, the negotiators can pick up the threads uh, where they left them uh, before the interruption took place. Now, since the dialogue has resumed, we would want uh, this opportunity to be seized. Pakistan feels that there is a real opportunity, and if uh, flexibility, magnanimity, and larger interest of Afghanistan uh, is uh, kept in view, uh, there is, after 18 long years, a real opportunity for a negotiated peace settlement. Now, talks between the United States and the Taliban have gone through a rough patch recently. There have been back and forth resumptions, suspensions, and recently President Donald Trump announced that he resumed talks with the Taliban. Are you confident that this time something significant can come out of the talks between the Taliban and the U.S.? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful of a positive result. Pakistan has given the support that was expected. In fact, we have bent backwards to support the process. Uh, uh, the co the goalpost kept changing, but we met all targets and uh, uh, created an environment where this process became possible. Uh, the recent release of hostages, you know, uh, is also uh, a case in point how Pakistan played a significant and a positive role. So I am hopeful, I am hopeful, but uh, I have my fingers crossed. Now talking about the, this latest round of talks between the United States and the Taliban, what type of, what type of role is your government planning to play to facilitate this round? We have and we are willing to play every possible role to facilitate the peace process. We have gone out of our way uh, to make this possible, and we would like a successful conclusion of this process. How important is a stable Afghanistan for Pakistan? Extremely important. Extremely important. Uh, if we have a stable, peaceful Afghanistan, we feel that Pakistan is a net beneficiary. So is Afghanistan, because Pakistan is one country that can really contribute to their reconstruction, their social economic development. We have, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the way uh, Afghan boys and girls have been educated in Pakistan, the way we have trained uh, their uh, you know, uh, technicians and managers for the future, for governance of Afghanistan, is, is a case in point. Uh, I think we are important trading partners. And with peace uh, in Afghanistan, our bilateral trade can go up significantly. With peace in Afghanistan, the energy corridor uh, that uh, uh, has been negotiated for a while, the TAPI gas pipeline, will become a reality. And our connections through land with Central Asian republics will become 
possible. What's the connectivity that is required to promote bilateral trade and investments in Central Asian republics? Okay, now, Foreign Minister, although today's topic is Afghanistan, but as a human being, I feel that it's important to raise the topic of Kashmir at such forums as well. It's been more than three months. Innocent Kashmiris in the Indian-occupied region have been living under repression. Curfew has been imposed. They're deprived of the basic necessities. Where does Pakistan stand right now? Well, I made... Uh a pronounced statement uh, today in the heart of Asia conference when I stepped out of the conference hall when the Indian minister uh, was speaking. That was a form of protest on the abuse of human rights in Indian-occupied Kashmir and continued curfew uh, and the torture, the maiming, the use of pellet guns, uh, the young boys being picked up. Uh, continuous detention without any charge of political leadership uh, of uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, that was a statement uh, that I made uh, by my uh, leaving the room. Pakistan feels um, uh, concerned. We feel that uh, Indian actions uh, can lead to uh, threatening peace and security of the region. Uh, Many countries have spoken up, but I think more needs to be said on the human rights abuse uh, that is taking place. We are grateful to countries like Turkey. Uh, they've spoken up. We are grateful to uh, President Erdogan. He mentioned Kashmir in his UN statement and took a very firm position. Uh, that is what, uh, that is what uh, friendship is, and that is what human cause is. No. From your answer, I understand there is definitely something lacking somewhere when it comes to international reaction to the cause of Kashmir. Are you satisfied with the role the international community has played in resolving the escalation of tensions in Kashmir? We are uh, positive on a couple of developments that have taken place. For example, the closed-door session that took place uh, in the Security Council. The uh, discussions that took place in the Human Rights Council in Geneva. But I feel that uh, the world could have done more. Uh, looking at the magnitude of the problem, uh, at the magnitude of the human rights abuse, uh, some parliaments have spoken, and let me uh, express my uh, uh, gratitude and uh, recognize uh, the role now being played by the US Congress to two resolutions that are tabled there, the role played by the European Union uh, uh, and, and that parliament uh, for uh, you know, a comprehensive debate on the situation in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, the role played by members of the British parliament uh, and uh, other, uh, in, in France and other countries, parliamentarians uh, have played a role. Governments, I feel, are still uh, though recognizing uh, the abuse uh, taking place, are a bit hesitant for uh, commercial and trade interests. I think uh, Europeans in particular, I, 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 would, uh, I would draw their attention to what's going on over there. It's a fundamental belief uh, in uh, Western democracies. They are very clear and very firm on human rights and here they can see a glaring abuse taking place. I think uh, 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 real politik should be set aside and the reality uh, should surface and the, and the international community should play a more significant role in resolving the Jammu and Kashmir dispute in line with the UN resolutions and the wishes of the Kashmiri people. Okay, now, with regards to Kashmir, my last question to you. What is Pakistan willing to do at this point when it comes to the Indian-occupied Kashmir? Are you going to raise the issue on other platforms as well? We've raised this issue uh, at every platform, and we will continue to raise this issue at every possible 
platform. We will continue to support this just uh, struggle uh, for right to self-determination. Uh, we will continue to give them political, diplomatic and moral support. And let the people of Kashmir know, Jammu and Kashmir know, uh, on the Indian side, that the entire nation across the political divide is with them, standing with them, and will not let them down. Okay. Foreign Minister, my last question. President Erdogan was supposed to visit Pakistan in October, but due to other engagements, uh, he had to postpone his trip. Do you have any idea when is he going to visit uh, your country? Yes. Uh, we are negotiating a new date, and hopefully it will be in February 2020. Uh, we are looking forward uh, to his visit. Uh, we are very excited about his visit. Uh, we are making all the necessary preparations, and he will uh, get a very warm reception when he comes to Pakistan. All right, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, thank you very much for talking to us.